What is up guys? Welcome back to Dysfunctional. My name is David Bryce and we got a couple things we got to talk about today. One, you guys know I'm a Ram owner, so we're going to talk about the new Ryzen 25 Ram Pro Charger because I think it's pretty neat. Uh, I'm usually not any type of electric person, but they got something that's actually pretty cool that's coming out. And then also, Dysfunctional with David Bryce Paranormal Edition is starting this week. We got a couple little easy stops that we want to go ahead and start and make because we got the Crescent Hotel coming. We got the Bell Witch Cave. We got the Conjuring House, Ohio State Reformatory. We want to go ahead and get it started. We're just so excited. Our new cameras came in. Our new equipment came in. So we just felt like we're just ready to go. So this week, we're going to go ahead and start making some videos and try to get them posted by next week. So guys, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see those new paranormal videos that's coming out because I am so excited about it. I've already done a little bit of stuff with it and it's just so much fun and I absolutely love it. So please hit that subscribe button. But first, this new Ram 1500 Pro Chart, they got so many different names for this thing. They got something new coming out. And so the uh, Mopar Ram just released their uh, a video about it. So we're gonna react to that video. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on it because everybody that knows me, I only buy Rams. I love Rams. And I hate what they're doing with like the engines and going to electric stuff and getting rid of the Hemi. Uh, even in the Dodge, Dodges, like the Hellcat and stuff, getting rid of that. I think that's a terrible mistake because you're completely cutting off your main audience. For Dodge, their main audience is the muscle car guys because Dodge has always been the top of the muscle cars in the production in the production lines and stuff. And so they're kind of making the same mistake like companies like WWE and NASCAR made. Back in the day, what made them famous was the drunken rednecks. That's what made them famous. And for some reason they got the idea to go away from that and go toward more toward kids and uh, even more liberal people and, and stuff. And it, what happened was they chased after a group of people that wasn't there yet and they completely cut off their most loyal group of people. And what happened was they ended up chasing away the most loyal group of people. And then the group that they was chasing after never really came like they was hoping it would. And so that ended up just cutting down the amount of ticket sales, cutting down even the WWE left the drunken rednecks and went to the kids. And now look what they're doing. They're having to backtrack. Now WWE's kind of gotten rid of the PG stuff and kind of added more of like the attitude era days to it and now people's coming back and watching it stuff's getting good again because they went back to their loyal base and i feel like dodge is making that same mistake because they're getting rid they're trying to go away from the most loyal base and they're going to the electric and that's just completely saying screw you to their most loyal base and pushing them to the side what i feel like they should have done more to make it more smart was to keep the hellcat keep all that stuff for now and cut probably cut the production in half and add all the ev stuff to it and then sell them both at the same time. And then if one day EV starts outselling these Hellcats and stuff, then start fading them out even more. And then one day can fade them out completely like they are now. Then if it goes the opposite way, like if uh, the EV start barely selling, then they can start revamping the production for the Hellcats and stuff again to counteract the EVs not selling as good because they don't know what's going to happen. This has a chance to severely hurt them because I know one thing is I'm not buying an electric sports car. That's not happening. I'm not buying the full electric truck because when you pull a load, you're only going to go 80 to 100 miles. That's not happening right now. We are nowhere near where we need to be for that. 50,000 years ago, a meteorite hit the earth at 26,000 miles an hour and made a mark that remains today. The industry shift to electrification is also moving at hyper velocity speed. Okay, I feel like what he just said is not true. Where the uh, moving to ele electric electrification, God, I'm so dyslexic, is uh, going at a fast pace. And that's not because that's what the people want. It's basically because that's what we're being forced to do by the government. The government's telling all these automakers, oh, you've got to go electric by this time, or we're going to keep charging you all these fees, and it makes it hard for them to make gas vehicles. No. Well, that's, it's not exactly what we want most especially where i'm from we got like one charger in the whole area that is not we're not wanting that we're not wanting the electric cars because you know how hard those things are to work on we like working on our own stuff we like if something breaks we can save a lot of money by working on it ourselves but you buy an electric car you got to be a 
an electrical engineer to work on those daggone things. So no, that's it's not moving in a fast pace. We're being forced to move in that fast pace. The industry shift to electrification is also moving at hyper velocity speed, altering the course of mobility in a seismic way and forever changing the landscape of transportation. So like geologists looking for nickel and iron from space down inside that crater, the Ram engineers dug deep into the electric vehicles that arrived before us and learned from them, evolved from them, and built an all new Ram EV from the ground up, frame first. And it's not just our new Ram Rev that will leave a permanent mark in the marketplace. We've applied that process, that evolution, to the entire lineup, reinforced our strength from the ground up with battery, with gas, and every Ram in between. Don't let the science fool you. I love how he got out of his like very high carbon emission helicopter and then got in his electric ram. Just, just saying. These are not our proving grounds. No. <laughs> this may be where we test ram products, but the true proving grounds are on your job sites, highways, boat launches, lumber yards, and in your driveways. That's where our trucks are really tested and proven. This is just where the hard work of the team is validated. Trucks like our all new Ram Rev earn the right to be called a Ram here, frame first at our proving grounds. And that's why we know that the Ram Rev will arrive without equal. This is why you buy a Ram. And it all starts here. This high strength steel frame was engineered around a serious extruded aluminum battery. Frame. That's the one I won't buy. We built this from the ground up to be a battery electric truck. Not take a truck and drop a battery into it. This foundation was engineered to be nothing less than the best electric truck in the industry, in the world. Lighter, stiffer, and more durable than ever before. Wider in the midship to properly house the battery packs. Look, there's easier ways to build a truck, but at Ram, we never settle for the easier way. Just look at the EDMs integrated into the- Okay, y'all saying y'all don't settle for the easy way, and I'm being honest, y'all are not, because what happens when this breaks? I got a truck out there. I got a 2019 Ram out there right now that I just got done working on, and it was super easy. And if I would have took it to the shop, it would have cost me a thousand something more dollars. Now taking this thing to an electrical engineer or to the dealership is going to cost me like four thousand different dollars. So y'all definitely not making it easy. Stella frame. They may look different than the motor that you have in your truck today, but these motors are power dense little beasts with performance to back it up. Ram Rev's twin 250 kilowatt electric drive modules combine the motor, the gearbox, and inverter into a single package to provide all-wheel drive capability by having one at the front axle and one at the rear. And the one up front includes an automatic disconnect, which allows the front wheels to spin freely, increasing efficiency, while the rear can be combined with an optional electronic locking differential. In English, that means over 650 horsepower and over 600 pound-feet of torque and zero to 60 in four seconds and enough and only 80 miles hauling a load power to run your job site or be a backup power source for your house look i know it sounds complicated at first but our engineers took all of the guesswork out of this for you with our new ev pages they are like the srt pages they show you a number of key performance figures and settings like power flow range impact driving history and charge recommendations current power range battery temperature and of course charging level it even has a system that authorizes payments when plugged in in public but we know as fast as the industry is changing not all of you are going to transition to electrification day one we had to rethink our powertrain strategy now this one they're about to show i might actually buy it's their new Hurricane turbocharged. Uh, they got the high output and the standard output. The high output, I believe, has like 540 horsepower. But the problem is you still don't get that sound of the V8. It's going to have more power, probably better gas mileage. But the sound, the sound is what I'm going to miss. But it also, but, and then again, it has better gas mileage. But when I was reading about it, it's only going to take plus or premium gas. High output, only premium. So are you really saving any money with a couple more miles per gallon when you're spending like 80 cents more? Per gallon for gas don't know we 
we are putting the new inline six twin turbo hurricane engines in our truck lineup going forward, both in the standard output and the high output. The high output puts out 540 horsepower and 520 pound feet of torque. Look, I love the 5.7 Hemi, but this puts out 145 more horsepower and 110 more pound feet of torque than that engine that we love. This is the next evolution of ice. Sounds technology. like crap though. Sounds like a weed ears. The firing order, number of main bearings, the crank design, it all works together to deliver better MVH, lower friction, and greater efficiency. Oh yeah, and more power per liter. This is the most power dense package we've ever offered. More power per liter than even the supercharged alcohol injected heavy powered Demon 170. With better fuel economy and incredible torque on demand that inline designs are known for. So when you see a new tungsten or an RHO, know that they aren't just powered by an inline six, they're powered by a new hurricane engine that's in line with our customers' expectations. Really pretty. Not just for what a truck can do, but for what a Ram must do. And let's face it, Ram trucks do pretty much everything. Whether you're working, playing, or commuting, pumping, or plugging, we have a full family of work trucks, a full lineup of electric trucks, and a multi-segment solution for sport trucks with Warlock and Rebel today, the new RHO, and maybe even someday a new TRX plus a game changer that's bearing down on another category. The all new tungsten trim level is the pinnacle of bespoke comfort. <laughs> it's tailored with the kind of tech that truck buyers actually use and represent a no compromise benchmark for not just truck interiors, but for any interior in a vehicle. Tungsten is the most technologically advanced ramp that is a very nice in interior. history. You Probably like 100,000 though. 14 and a half inch touchscreen a 10 and a quarter inch passenger screen, another first in segment for RAM, massive digital instrument cluster, digital rear view mirror, head up display, level two autonomy, driver assistance, 23 speaker clips audio, 24 way power seats, and you can even use your smartphone as your keys. But as fast paced as we're running, and as quickly as our industry is shifting, we want change to happen at our customer's pace. Now this truck right here that they're literally about to show, it's called the Ram Charger. I think it's pretty interesting. I don't know how many problems it's gonna have. It seems like it possibly have a lot because it runs off a battery. Like the batteries is what controls the wheels and stuff. That's where you get everything from. But it also has the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 engine in it that is from the original V6 Ram. But all it's there for is to run our low RPMs to charge the battery, which is, I think that's pretty, that's the only way I would ever buy an electric truck because I had to go ride into Windrock and stuff all the time. That's four or five hours from me. And then to have to go up a mountain and have to stop every 80 miles to charge, it's going to make my trip like four hours longer. And that's already a very miserable trip. So, and then plus there's nowhere to charge going up through there. So having something that can actually like charge itself, because I believe like with the gas and stuff in it, you can go like 700 miles, I think even possibly more. That's doable. And probably towing a trailer, probably like, 400 and something which is still very doable because when the batteries start dying that v6 turns on to start charging it you don't get no will power from the v6 it's not connected to a transmission or nothing it literally just charges the battery it's just a generator you don't buy ram trucks for the paint leather and the filigree you buy them because they're built to serve. Built to serve whatever needs you have. And they're built from the ground up, frame first. And this is the ultimate Ram truck. This is the all new Ram Charger. And this thing is an absolute beast. Over 660 horsepower, over 600 pound feet of torque, and zero to 60 in four seconds. But the story is way bigger than that. This has its own built-in charging system. It's a battery electric truck with a 92 kilowatt hour battery and 130 kilowatt generator that charges all the time. Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, whatever is <laughs> optimal for efficiency. And because there's no direct mechanical path from the engine to the wheels, the power station charges straight to the battery, meaning you can bank power along the way to address what could be your range anxiety. The new Ram Charger has been designed to pull more than seven tons. 
It's been built to pull an entire skeptical demographic into the electric truck segment. All right, that's it, guys. I think that's all they're going to show of the truck. I mean, I, I don't know what to think. I love Ram, but I want that V8. They should just put more power in that V8 something because I, I don't like this full crap. Of, oh, it's going so fast. No, we're being forced to go full electric, okay? I, I don't I don't know. So, guys, tell me what you think about in the comments of the new 2025 Ram 1500 Pro Charger, the new Hurricane Engine, the Rev EV, and just let me know what you think because I, I'm about 50 50 on this. That is it for this video, guys. I just want to talk about that a little bit and also let y'all know that the paranormal stuff starting this week. Uh, what I love about being in here is I can literally put a jacket on and sit in my boxers, but it's starting next week. I'm going to have to be getting up. I can't be sitting in my boxers anymore. <laughs> because y'all gonna be seeing all of me because the new cameras the paranormal stuff everything is coming out so make sure you hit that like button that bell button and you subscribe and i will see you next time bye